Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and this time we've got the pleasure of watching Alapsassons playing in the American Tier 5 Heavy Tank, the T1 Heavy. So this is going to be a good video, hopefully for all of you out there who want me to feature lower tier tanks on the channel. I know that recently I have been featuring a lot of tier 10s and so I really hope that you guys out there who want to see that low tier gameplay enjoy this one and Alapsassons is going to have an absolute cracker. So what is this absolute fat American low tiered heavy tank. Well, the T1 Heavy looks like... Oh, I remember Ike used to think that this was the vehicle that ate all of the other tanks. Oh, oh hey, stu maybe stop by at a few McDonald's on the way towards the enemy team, right? It's absolutely gigantic. It has terrible camera rating because of that. But surprisingly, it's not actually all that slow. It's limited at 35 kilometers an hour, which is pretty much what all of the American heavy tanks are. And as we can see, it's, it's a lot faster than a vehicle like this Churchill 3 behind him that tier 5 Soviet premium heavy tank. Not the Churchill 1, that is the standard British tank. Funny story, the Churchill 3 is the one of the first um, Soviet premium tanks that went into the game and it was, I guess, the Lendley's program and that's how they could justify that there were British tanks that were within the Soviet tech tree. And originally, of course, there were no British tanks in the game that weren't Lendley's and inside the Soviet lines. So here we can see that the T1 Heavy has a fairly good power to weight ratio. To be exact, the power to weight ratio of this tank is over 16. Its ground resistances aren't that bad. And so that gives this tank a bit of an advantage over a vehicle like the KV-1. And also this vehicle is fairly heavily frontally armored. It's got about 100 millimeters of all-round frontal protection, which does come in very handy. Now we're going to see something a little bit bizarre here as Lapsassons randomly picks up his first three kills of this game. It looks like that Churchill 3 is a little bit annoyed that he is slower than the T1 Heavy, and so he decides to track Lapsasons. So Lapsasons uses his repair kit, and then the Churchill 3, that pesky little bugger behind him, decides to track him again. But he comes to an abrupt <laughs> he comes to an abrupt halt. His tank completely stationary, his turret not moving. I think that strongly suggests that this gentleman called Troll Tanker, with no thousands of games played, just got himself banned. Lapsassons probably doesn't realize quite yet that he is banned, but now that the, the Churchill remains inanimate sitting behind him, I think he's figured out that he's got his just comeuppance. That, that Churchill was clearly trying to track Lapsassons so he could overlap him or overtake him <laughs> to be able to then go up on the hill and pick up a few kills. And um, yeah, you know, you're just asking for it when you've got a name like Troll Tanker. So now Lapsassons turns his attention to the Panzer 38 NA. And one thing that the T1 Heavy does have is quite a lot of DPM. And this is something that's bizarre in World of Tanks. Lower tiered vehicles have obviously lower amounts of health than higher tiered vehicles. But quite often, not lower amounts of DPM. The DPM of all of the American heavies doesn't really get any higher until you reach the M103. This in fact has 1916 DPM, which means that when you put things like a gun rammer, good crew skills, vents on this vehicle, then you're pretty much killing, if you can penetrate of course, the entirety of three to four equal tiered heavy tanks within a minute. And so that's why sometimes I feel like the low tiers can be really unforgiving for players. Sure, you kill your opponents quickly, but that also comes at the risk of being taken out quickly yourself. Talking about taking tanks out quickly, Lapsasons is sort of certainly making short work of the enemy team here. And he sees a Largo, and he decides that he wants to try and load high explosive rounds to put one into the Largo, but that means that unfortunately now he's engaging a quite heavily armoured Soviet medium tank, the T-34. I think that thing has about 45mm of all-round protection, and because it's so well angled, that means that the T-1 heavy 76mm high explosive rounds does precious little damage to the T-34 there. Reloading AP, having run out of high explosive now he turns his attention to the Swedish Largo, goes around the corner and puts a couple of rounds into him. Finishing him off and securing a top gun for himself. But one thing that's absolutely hilarious is look at the drama that's going on over here with the Churchill 3. In fact, let's go take a quick look at that. So while Lapsasons is working his way through the enemy team, this AFK Churchill is being engaged by a Chihar. And at first, it doesn't look like the Chihar has quite figured out that the Churchill is AFK. But then he gains his confidence after a few shots with the in inanimate Churchill 3 not returning fire. And just look how hard it is for this tier 3 Japanese light tank to be able to penetrate this Churchill 3. 
what does that mean? Does that mean that he's been... Oh, that's the sixth year anniversary skin right on a New Year account. I thought that he'd been playing the game for six years. That would be a bit crazy if he'd been playing the game for six years and not played a thousand games of World of Tanks yet. And it just gets absolutely ridiculous because this Chiha cannot figure out in the slightest to be able to deal with this Churchill 3. Okay, now we're back in the action. I just How ridiculous is it that that AFK Churchill 3 was able to avoid so much damage from those little light tanks, trying to figure out where to be able to penetrate him. But in the meantime, Lapsa Sons finishes off the T-34 and then turns around to deal with the Chinu Kai as well. Wow, what a round here. Eight kills. And now there's an Excelsior on the enemy team who ricochets an APCR round off the front of his tank. And Lapsa Sons clearly knows where the weak point of the Excelsior is. And that is the turret. It has a similar kind of turret to a Churchill. That's because it's a tier 5 British heavy tank. Of course, it's going to have a similar turret. And he loads some APCR rounds to clearly go through that. And it was certainly a battle of the APCR rounds. A damn good thing that uh, Lapsa Sons did it, intend to use them there because the Excelsior was indeed firing APCR and puts the first damaging tanks into the vehicle. I guess apart from the T-34 that I think damaged him earlier. It looks like Lapsa Sons is over-angling his armor here. Bit of a mistake. And because of the fact that he had to use his repair kit earlier to that troll on his team, he actually can't put his tracks back on to go after the Churchill. Now, I'm not quite sure. I didn't see. Does that mean that he killed the Churchill just before they killed the AFK Churchill 3 on his team? That probably means that he's beginning a 1 versus 4 engagement rather than a 1 versus 5. But he quickly changes that into a 1 versus 3. And he's on 11 kills right now. And in fact, no one else on his team has killed anyone. But seeing how there's only three remaining tanks, what happened with the other kill? Ah, here we go. The Amex 40, who he just killed, managed to actually TK somebody on his team. So, <laughs> if Lapsa Sons wants to get through this one, he is going to have to kill 14 tanks. And that is one of the rarest medals in the game. Something that I myself have not been able to achieve in the 40,000 games of World of Tanks that I've played. But a Zainai Heroes Medal, if you can manage to pick that up, you certainly do etch your name into World of Tanks history a little bit. They're just so rare. I wonder what kind of an actual percentage of players have ever managed to pick them up. So Lapsa Sons puts three APCR rounds through the front of the T1 Heavy. Now he has run out of APCR, he's going to have to be able to try and penetrate with armor piercing. But that shouldn't be too hard. Because as I mentioned, the frontal effective armor of this vehicle is about 100. But he doesn't have time to flinch because he has to engage this chi ha that has his side now. Good, he gets his frontal armor towards his opponents. That means the chi ha is unable to penetrate him. That's something you've got to watch out for on the T1 Heavy. Oh, and the T1 Heavy tank's trying to flank him in the side. Now with 102 hit points, that means he's going to be a one-shot for the enemy Tier 5 American Heavy. Will he be able to engage him? He bounces, puts one right through the front plate. Clean kill, 13th kill of the game, and now it's going to be a 1 versus 1 with a Marder 38T. Now that Marder 38T clearly is an AFK as he has picked up a kill, so I wonder where he's possibly going to be. Man, this is neck and neck stuff. The Marder 38T, while it is a tank that is two tiers lower than him, it does have a, a vicious little tank destroyer gun, pretty much the same kind of uh, capacity as the gun that Lapsa Sons is using. And he's blind firing right now. You can hear the Marder 38T firing blind. Maybe he thinks that Lapsa Sons will be camping behind this location or alternatively sitting towards here along the cap. Now, if you do have people in the cap circle, I'd say eight times out of 10, they're gonna be sitting in this location. So in this kind of a situation, what the Marder 38T wants to do is probably get to the far extent of the map, probably down here, possibly up here, and try and slam in some shells. And if you can do that, Lapsa Sons is not going to be doing too well. Because while the front of this tank is fairly decent, the side armor is only 52.4 millimeters, and the rear of the tank is 46. And that's probably one of the downsides to this vehicle. You might be looking at this tank thinking it looks absolutely incredible. Um, I think a large amount of that is down to Lapsa Sons playing very well, but also getting quite lucky at times and just being able to kill his way through his opponents without being engaged uh, by multiple tanks. But this vehicle compared to the, the KV-1, obviously probably one of, if not the most popular tanks in the game, probably one of the, the most played vehicles in the game. Now the KV-1 has 75 millimeters, or is it 70? I'm not 100% certain there of all round protection. It's at the front, it's at the side, and I believe it has 70 at the back along the lower plate and also on the mid plate. And I think there's a bar along the upper part of the rear armor that only has 50. Or well, when I say only has 50, that's still rather decent. 
And that's why the KV-1 can feel like such a beast for lower tier tanks to take out. Tier 4 vehicles, even T3 tier 3 vehicles are really going to struggle against these tier 5 behemoths. But of course, you know, the shoe's on the other foot when you get into your, your plus 1 and plus 2 matchmaking games. I'm sure the, the new matchmaker system that Wargaming are going to be putting in in patch 918 are actually going to favour a lot of these lower tier vehicles. It should be exceptional for them. Uh, a tank like the T1 Heavy, it doesn't really do very well against tier, sorry, tier 6 Heavy Tanks and Tier 7 Heavy Tanks. I always get this vehicle a little bit confused with the M6 because it looks exactly the same, right? Now the M6 packs a 90mm gun. And this, ooh, we don't have time to talk about that because the Marder 38T comes round the corner a bit earlier than I thought. Lapsusons puts one in and the Marder 38T bounces off him and he finishes him off, picking up his 14th kill. Just what was that Marder 38T doing? And one of the reasons why I wanted to feature this replay so much is because we actually have the view from the enemy team. Thanks to Pan Peter Jeff, who uploaded this playing in the Excelsior there, we can take a look to see what journey this Marder 38T went on. So firstly, the Marder 38T finishes off the T28. Then our Marder 38T friend decides that he probably thinks that he wants to shoot across this gap, but ends up plowing himself into a wall. Oh dear, <laughs> what is this? Mr. Marder 38T, you have gone and goofed here, buddy. But it's not over. Friendly neighborhood Churchill decides like he wants to try and help the Marder 38T up. But he goes, oh wait, oh wait, what's going on here? No friend, no! <laughs> the Marder 38T now stuck decides there's only one way down and he actually manages to get down that slope without taking any damage which is very impressive now the marder 38t decides to sit here from uh, only three minutes into the game and we can see him sitting in this position and he was the one who was blind firing at Lapsa Sons on the enemy team, although he wasn't able to shoot him through the building despite his best efforts. And it wasn't until pretty much five minutes later that he decided to take matters into his own hands and slip down the slope, only losing about 36 of his hit points, but also looks like his tracks at the same time. And from here, well, you know the rest. What a fantastic game for Lapsa Sons in his T1 heavy tank, taking down 14 kills, the only person on his team to kill one of the enemy tanks. What a fantastic achievement. So Lapsusons, unsurprising nails an ace tank here. 1,823 base experience points. The Rezena Heroes Medal, one of the most fantastic achievements you can ever get in World of Tanks. And Naden's Medal for destroying all of the enemy light tanks, which is all the more impressive at low tiers because, of course, there are a hell of a lot more light tanks on the enemy team. A Steel War Medal for ricocheting 1,400 damage. And a High Caliber for 2,000 damage. 898 damage dealt. That would be very impressive in a tier 8 tank, let alone in a vehicle 3 tiers lower. And even though he did fire a few APCR rounds and he doesn't run a premium account, he made a tiny profit. But you know what? I would trade millions and millions of credits to be able to get one of these medals, let alone make a profit without a premium account and also achieve one at the same time. So Lapsassons, congratulations to you and thank you so much for uploading this on what replays for the community to enjoy. I knew I had to feature this when I saw some of the dramatic things happen with that absolute little scumbag on your team tracking you and getting himself banned to the hilarious adventures of Mr. Marder 38T. And a big thank you to Pan Peter Jeff for also uploading his perspective from the enemy team, which just add so much context to this video. And hopefully all of you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And also, if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. This week, most of you have requested the Chinese heavy tanks, although I must make a passing mention that a lot of you requested the French tank destroyers. But I went and took a look inside my tech tree, and I don't have the tier 6 to the tier 9, and I only have three million credits so there's no chance I can manage to purchase all of those French tank destroyers yet. So tonight I'm going to be working my way up the Chinese tech tree and it's going to culminate with the 113 which is probably one of the better tier 10 heavy tanks in the game and it's certainly favorable for an aggressive player. And if you've never seen one of my tech tree showcases before it's an opportunity to get my opinion about an entire line in World of Tanks. I'll be doing a miniature tank review all the way up with gameplay so you can see if it's a line that's worth maybe playing or if you've already got the vehicle 
vehicles, maybe pick up a few tips and tricks. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who does tune in to the Tech Tree Showcases on Sunday. Thanks for making it the most popular World of Tanks content on Twitch. And there's no doubt that it's probably some of the most fun content for me to make as well. And also, it's Easter Sunday. Have an absolutely lovely time, whatever you decide to get up to, and just don't eat too much chocolate, right? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.